a guest post on here. And today let's talk about my Scorching Pools Wild Yuga build. So if you guys don't know what Wild is, Wild is basically like this game's poison, um, whatever infinitely stackable damage over time is called in whatever game. And this build turned out extremely promising, especially because of the memory daggers, which are just incredibly strong. Now, there's obviously a lot of possibilities that you can do um, with these daggers. You can play whatever skill you want. I just personally found Scorching Pulse to be the best damage-wise. However, we're also going to talk about some other skills that could fit your playstyle a lot better. Um, overall, this build, I've done everything the game has to offer. But just so you understand, this is a very expensive build. This is definitely not a beginner build. Uh, if you want a beginner build, check out Milky BK's Whirlwind build. It is a incredibly strong. You can watch this build to get kind of a teaser of what kind of interactions there are in the game, but you're not going to be able to play this build anytime soon. We're going to go over that a little bit later in the video. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. First up, this build plays Space Time Yuga. That's the free one. Now, usually damage over time builds play the other Yuga. I'm very well aware of that. But in my testing, I've not found a single reason not to go for the normal Yuga. And I'll show you why in a second. So how this guy works is Basically, there is this twisted space-time with space-time energy. Now, the first time I read all of this, uh, I was very, very overwhelmed. I will basically dumb it down for you. You have a, basically, copy of yourself here that will follow you around and cast your main skill. Your main skill is always whatever is in your first skill here. It doesn't have anything to do with keybinds down here, only whatever is first uh, in this energy skill table right here. Now... Some other things you have to know because they kind of like synergize with him. So usually he has a cast time. So he can only cast once every 1.5 seconds. And along the way, you'll get some bonuses. He will attack a little bit faster. But at the end of the day, you will get to synchronize time. And then it removes the cast frequency limit from space time illusion, basically freeing him up and they, he will cast almost as fast as you will. Now you can only summon him once this space time energy is full. And the way you do this is you just spam your skill. So for example, if you get into a map, your bar will already be almost filled up. You just have to cast a few of these um, to get to maximum energy. Then you press E once and that's him there. He doesn't have a duration. He doesn't go away ever unless you have this mastery, which I actually don't take. Now, uh, obviously sometimes it's nice. It can save your life, but Overall, it's just really, really annoying uh, in the gist of things to resummon him again. I could go on and go on about all of these, but that's in general what it goes down to. You get a little bit of extra buffs whenever you cast uh, in his AoE right here, which is also a nice downside of scaling a lot of AoE for this build that you're always in here and you get his bonuses. So let's talk about Wilt for a second. This whole build revolves around memories. So memories have this line here, which says adds a certain percentage of the skills damage to base wilt damage and i want to make this clear this does not have to be an erosion skill i know wilt is erosion based it does not have to be that is why we're using um our friend scorching pulse right here it is fire but it doesn't say anything about erosion it takes this spell fire damage and converts it to wilt now to show you what wilt is i will quickly just spam this guy here for a little bit now don't look at the dps the dps is going to be up by 99 million it doesn't go further uh, but all you have to know is this wilt right here basically the enemy takes erosion damage and it stacks infinitely all you need to know normally wilt goes for one second but we're scaling the duration quite a bit for example from stuff like this increased duration against legendary enemy units so for example this is 108 duration with one second your duration would now go up to 2.08 now you might be thinking oh that's kind of annoying though we're stacking a lot of duration okay so we're gonna have six seven will durations that sounds like it's gonna take a lot of time to kill enemies where there's two reasons why that's not true number one is um these daggers also have willed targets defeated by you explode on death dealing 183 of their maximum life as secondary erosion damage. What that means is whenever you kill one mob, most of the mobs on the screen are going to explode. However, against bosses where there's no small targets to kill nearby, that doesn't really work, right? So against those enemies, you need something like Reap. And I'm going to talk about how Reap works. Now, Reap is an instant damage effect that basically will... Uh, take the amount of dots that are on an enemy and subtract what it would deal in a certain time frame immediately. So let's say you're applying wilts and it, let's say it goes for five seconds, right? And you're stacking and stacking and stacking. Whenever you reap procs, one second out of those five seconds, whatever damage this would deal is dealt immediately instead of having to wait. And these damage jumps will be incredibly noticeable. You will be fighting enemies, you will apply your wilts and then all of a sudden enemy HP goes like this, right? And you will be like, what was that? 
That is reap. Now, getting reaps, on the other hand, is usually really hard, right? You're getting like these 0.5 reaps. Um, you're getting some reap duration, all of that good stuff. Sure, you can do that. But the thing about Scorching Pulse is down here, you will also see reap 1.25 seconds of dot when the skill hits. So it has incredibly high base damage. It has uh, a reap attached to it. What's the downside? Well, it has a cooldown. And this is where a lot of our scaling goes into. Now, uh, we're scaling cooldown with a few things. Number one, uh, we are Warlock, which, which makes it so we go Merciless. 15% uh, of bonuses to attack speed and 15% of bonuses to cast speed is also applied to cooldown recovery rate. Now, just so you know, stuff like this actually counts for double. 12% attack and cast speed counts as 12% attack speed and 12% cast speed, basically double dipping. And then we're obviously also having the Exquisite Box. And the Exquisite Box we're going to talk about in a second once we're done with Scorching uh, because it is really, really important. Now, one more line that Scorching Pulse has is um, if there's any Flame Pillar within 15 meters when the skill is cast, it's triggered again. Flame Pillars, if you don't know, are these small totems that you can summon and you can have up to three at a time. And you can see here they're casting normally like whatever random attack they do. But if we do um, our attack, it will actually fire Scorching Pulses from them um, over a period. And these Flame Pillars will also apply Reap. And we can also support them so we can get even more rape. That's basically the whole strat with the flame pillars. You don't really put them down while you're mapping, but it's incredible against bosses. Then let's go into the box. Now, next to these very expensive daggers, exquisite box is also incredibly expensive, right? So these are the three items that kind of make or break the build. Uh, if you can get a corroded one, I mean, you won the game. You can basically just spam these blazes, right? Sure. But incredibly important is also this trigger down here. Trigger the skill of the fifth slot when dealing damage. And this skill will be Shadow Swamp. This is basically a ground effect. And whenever you summon it and it hits an enemy with a certain amount of spell erosion damage, this also gets converted to will damage with the daggers. It just deals a ton of damage. It doesn't have a cooldown. You do not want to have a cooldown skill here, just so you know. So this is basically how it looks like. And this just auto casts. It just procs automatically whenever you deal damage. So for example, if we shoot here. Let's just make him do the work. Even if your clone hits, it still counts. All of these purple explosions are like incredibly fast hitting Shadow Swamps. However, I will say this. I've tried a lot of skills here. Some have completely lagged me out. So just, just so you understand that, um, you can try it out for yourself. This is not set in stone. It's just the best setup that I've found. But with the basics out of the way, let's go over items. Uh, we have a Long Night Sorcerer's Mask. Um, this gives you plus one to spell skill level and minus one focus blessings, which doesn't really matter because we're not using focus blessings. So if we look at the trade house, there is a certain unique helmet that you might be thinking about that is incredibly strong, and it is called Surging Inspiration. And I'll just show you a small clip of me trying to use this helmet while doing Thunderstorm. It completely lagged out my PC. It even crashed it at one point. Stay away from this helmet. It's currently bugged. Basically, what it does is instead of hitting just two extra enemies, it hits all the enemies on screen, which you might think, oh, that's OP. This helmet has gone up in price incredibly high. Don't buy it. It will completely destroy your PC. I mean, I don't even know who could play this. As a chest, we're using Twilight Vestments. Incredibly strong. Um, basically gives you a lot of energy shield. It gives you plus two to persistent skill level. And whenever you reap, your energy shield restarts immediately, which is very nice as some region. Energy shield charge speed. Reaping duration is a stat that is incredibly strong. Basically, it means if it says one second reap, instead with 42%, it will be a 1.42 second reap. Then we have Exquisite Box, which is incredibly strong. It gives you additional cooldown recovery and it gives you the proc. Even though it has less damage, it is still worth doing. It is really, really good. Um, as for gloves, I would take Energy Shield Regain as your implicit on these gloves and just go for as much. Um, resistances and energy shield as you can. You don't need that much elemental resistances. We're going to go over that. We have that covered with the aura, but erosion resistance, we're not really getting all that much. It is very premium. Then we got our infinity. For infinity, we got an incredible affinity here with triple reaps and then also forbidden power. However, if you can get forbidden power in the second talent, that's maybe almost better. Whatever these could be, right? You can look it up. Um, look through all the trees, whatever gives you more damage, whatever gives you more energy shield, more defenses um, is incredible on your infinity. Uh, then we have our Lone Walker's Boots. Uh, we're getting the extra aura effect. For this to take effect, you have to have six, seven, or eight. The roll depends. We're going to talk about that in the aura section. This gives you just a ton of extra stuff. And it also gives you quite a bit of movement speed, which 
uh, is always nice. However, auras only take effect on self. So if the, you're in the from the future and you're playing in a party, obviously you can't do that. Um, as for rings, we're looking for energy shield. A lot of it. Reaping cooldown recovery speed is quite hard to get, but incredibly strong. Uh, once again, erosion resistance. Skill area, you can get up to 72% here. We're just going to make it clear. Really good. And reaping duration at the end. Uh, on the second ring, I think you have ailment damage instead. The life is completely useless. Affliction effect, right? And then obviously the memory daggers. If you don't have two memory daggers, I would personally not play this build. Next up, let's go over talents. Um, we go Goddess of Darkness into Warlock into Psychic. Pretty straightforward. As for talents, we're going Plague, which gives you a lot of dot duration. And it also means that your dots, after an enemy dies, it spreads to nearby enemies, which gives you better clear speed. Um, then we're going for Poisoned Relief. This is Injury Buffer. This means that some of the damage that you take is going to be converted into damage over time. So your Energy Shield Recharge can kind of mitigate it, which is very nice. Uh, if you're doing Tier 7s, this is not really necessary. You can go for Forbidden Power. I, however, already have that on my Affinity, so it's not that good. Even Subtle Impact is fine. It gives you a little bit of extra dot damage if you're uh, nearby enemies. For Warlock, we go for this, which gives you a ton of cooldown recovery rate. We already talked about this. And we're going for off the beaten track. And we're going to talk about this note in the skill section a little bit later. This basically makes it so we can use a lot of auras. As for the nodes themselves, I'm not going to go for every single one of them. I'm going to go for some that are important, but you can just basically look at it here. Obviously, at the end, we want the plus one to the persistent skill level. Before that, you get a little bit of extra injury buffer, really strong. Also, this talent here is incredibly important because it gives you a uh, 5% chance for another wield stack, which is kind of like 5% more damage. And it also gives you Blur, which basically means you don't have enemy collision and you also have some chance to avoid damage. Then our Warlock tree looks like this. On the way, an important one actually is getting this one here. It gives you six mana restored on hit, but you would take this one anyways because it has attack and cast speed. We go further, further, further. And at the end here, we have the plus one to all skill levels. I don't think I have to tell you to take it. Um, definitely also take ailment damage ignores resistances like a lot of bosses do, right? Or... Uh, whatever you have on your beacon gives enemies resistances. This basically takes care of that completely, which is also why we're not using anything that penetrates enemy erosion resistance. A psychic tree looks like this. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. You definitely want all this minus sealed mana that you can get. So you fit in all your auras. Incredibly important. Obviously, we talked about cooldown recovery speed. Also really important. You get an extra reap from this tree as well, which can be nice, especially at the start when you don't have that many options to get reap. Um, reap cooldown recovery speed basically just means if a reap, for example, here says six seconds with the cooldown, it comes up faster. So you do more damage I'm reaping duration here. Otherwise, pretty cookie cutter. As for skills, we're using scorching pulse. Um, when you have scorching pulse, you don't need uh, reaping agony directly here. It is enough. You just want to get all the damage that you can. Uh, shorten duration, a lot of more damage, control spell, pain amplification, enhanced ailment and improved corrosion. As our movement skill that we have here, we use Spiral Strike. You can do double Spiral Strike if you really want to, but usually, if I have to loot anyways, it's usually a little bit too fast. The way this game works, it spawns monsters pretty slowly, so it doesn't really do much. I just use normal Spiral Strike. Our Flame Pillar, we basically only put down against bosses, so while mapping, just completely ignore it. Only put it down when you feel like there's a really tanky enemy that you need to kill. Uh, there's a stone skin, which is our defensive layer. We have this one automatically activated by our box. Otherwise, you have to press it yourself. And it is supported with all in. Since it's basically up all the time, we have so much cooldown reduction. It doesn't matter that the duration is down, uh, but we do want the effect to get increased. Then we have our shadow swamp. As I said, you can put whatever you want here, whatever you want procced. Some of them will lag you out really badly because you have so much cooldown reduction. So you get to proc so often with the box amulet. But here's basically the same thing. I put one Reaping Agony on here. I don't know exactly if it's correct. It's really hard to see on the dummy once you get to like 100 mil. Um, but yeah, uh, basically all the same thing. I also put a Cataclysm here because it gives you extra Affliction charges on the enemy. If you don't know, Affliction basically means at 100% Affliction stacks, the enemy takes 50% more dot damage, which is a more multiplier. And then you can also have Affliction effect from your gear, which makes it even stronger. Now, let's talk about our aura setup. Now, these boots are incredible. 84% aura effect is insane, but you have to use six or more auras to use them. How do you do that? Well, this is where the talent that we talked about earlier comes into play. So, uh, you have Warlock right here, and it has off the beaten path. Plus free support skill levels. Really nice. Gives you a little bit of damage, a little bit of 
whatever, right? All the support skills get plus three. But the main thing here is support skills mana multiplier is set to 105%. Now, in order for this combo to work, you need precise seal conversion. Not the normal seal conversion, doesn't work. Precise. You can buy this one in the auction house. It costs around about 10 FE as of this recording. What this has is it has a mana cost multiplier. The normal version does not. So be careful. It does not work. And this mana cost multiplier goes to 105. Usually this has a high mana multiplier because uh, if you put all your auras on your life, that would be OP, right? But you can't because it's going to take more reservation space. But with that talent, it doesn't. So that's why I can put all of these auras on my life and still have even a little bit left. As for our auras on life, you want steadfast. Now we're not really scaling armor and this is the first one I would remove, but it still gives you like 16 to 17% physical damage reduction, which is very strong because it doesn't cost you much. Once again, it just reserves a little bit of life. Same with nimbleness, it gives you a little bit of base evasion. So sometimes you evade enemy attacks. Um, swiftness gives you cooldown recovery rate. The movement speed is fine, I guess, but not that important. It's about the cooldown recovery rate. And we also have deep pain here. Um, which gives you extra dot damage, duration, affliction inflicted per second. It's great. These are the ones you have reserved on your life right here with precise seal conversion. And our second setup here, I'm just going to go up a little bit, uh, is the one that I have reserved on mana. And that is uh, energy fortress, precise if you can, gives you a lot of energy shield, precise elemental resistance. This one is, is huge. Uh, if you can get this one as a precise, it also gives plus one maximum resistance which with the aura effect will get scaled to two maximum resistance, which is really good. But basically with all the aura effect, this gives us almost a hundred LE res and we don't have to think about it at all on gear, giving us so much freedom. Uh, then we have erosion, which gives us quite a bit more damage. And to fit this all in, we're also using a restrain, which gives us minus sealed mana. Then at the end, we have um, precise curse on hit, which basically just automatically applies entangled pain, which gives you more extra dot. Just a little bit more damage and then we have magical source the reason we have this here without any supports it's just it fixes our mana but we can't really fit it in here because then we need a six link and a hundred energy so I just throw it in here now to show you a little bit how this would look like i'm going to for example show you a growth of calamity here real quick while mapping a lot of what you do is just basically like spiral striking through enemies and they will immediately die if you have the box and the reason is this one triggers on any hit. Even if your movement skill hits it, immediately you're going to proc this skill here, whatever you have in here. For example, I have Shadow Swamp and you will see that in a second. And once one enemy dies, all of them die because of the explosions. So this is how it would look like right here. I don't even have anything summoned. You just walk through and everything explodes. Now, as we go up to the boss, I will show you something neat. If you're in a map, you can, even against the boss, make use of the explosions, right? Everything dies here. Go up to the boss real quickly and once you're at the boss let's even do goddess of hunting it doesn't matter uh more hp who cares uh, and as you go to the boss you can press your lead mechanic button and it will summon a lot of mobs on the boss which will one shot it basically immediately now see how i haven't even pressed my copy i'll press it right now usually if you have a hard map at the start of the map you can like spam one to fill up your bar here and then summon it but we go to the boss we press v uh, we kill one mob and it just explodes immediately. But even if you don't have that, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the Lee mechanic here. As you can see, we're just completely uh, popping off. Uh, now, I will give you a little bit of details about how you fight bosses, though. Uh, because if you're doing tier 8 bosses, it might get a little bit frisky. Now, as for bossing, the damage is definitely there. If you know how these bosses work, it's going to be an absolute cakewalk. However, what you want to do, if you want to be a little bit more careful, is you want to replace Scorching Pulls. One of the things about Scorching Pulse is it is kind of melee still, right? Let's try this real quick. This is how it would look like, right? This is how you Scorching Pulse. It has AoE, but sometimes the boss in its radius has some kind of effects, right? And then it's kind of annoying. Uh, as well as that, your clone will only cast um, the Scorching Pulse if you're next to an enemy. What can you do? Well, you go for Lightning Storm right here. So what Lightning Storm gives you is, usually this has a two second cooldown, but since we're already scaling the cooldown, it perfectly fits into this. So what you do is you're going to stand uh, back down here and you're just going to spawn lightning storms. And what this does is it kind of moves right now. But if you if you look at this, if there is an enemy, it will stick on the enemy. So you just stand on the side and mind your own business and just cast lightning storms. And as you can see right here, it takes longer to scale up to 99 mil. 
But that's not that big of a deal. You're out here, nothing's gonna happen to you, and you're just gonna completely annihilate the boss. So what's my conclusion on this build? Uh, number one, it's incredibly fun. It's an all-rounder. It's fast. It has good boss damage but it is expensive. And I want to harp on this point a little bit more. Wild is very, very gear dependent. That is a huge problem. And the main reason is that you don't really have base wild damage. You need some way to convert it. And for spells, the only way is memory. You have like a support gem, sure. Um, weapons have their own weapons that are way cheaper, but spells only have memory. So if you don't have the memory, you have all these multipliers, but you have nothing to multiply. So I'm going to throw that out there. You definitely need these two. And then on top of that, Exquisite Box will give you a huge upgrade. I think you can definitely do without Exquisite Box though. However, this will like more than double your damage. So if you're farming for any item, this should be it. Other than that, what are my conclusions? Um, yeah, once again, don't play this without two times memory. It's incredibly fun. Now, I did not realize just how fun Yuga actually was. Um, but just whirling around while basically this copy of you just kills everything and you don't have to think about anything. It's just so comfy. The other Yuga does a lot of damage, although a little bit slower. Even if the other Yuga did two times the damage than these two combined, I probably would still go with this build because it's just so comfy to play. But yeah, whether you actually have the currency to play this build or maybe you learned a little bit of, about Wilt, about Reap, some of the game mechanics, um, I hope you're having a lot of fun with it. Definitely try it out once you have the prerequisite items. Hopefully in the future, it gets a lot more inexpensive. Some of these mechanics are hidden behind some very rare items. Uh, but yeah, see ya. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah, incredibly fun build. Um, I will probably play more Yuga builds in the future just because it's such a comfy play style. Just running around, having your copy do everything for you. It's kind of like minions, but you're not completely useless. Uh, so to say, you still deal a ton of damage. Like at least half of the damage comes from you. Um... But yeah, overall, I was extremely surprised by Scorching Pulse, extremely surprised by Wilt in general, how far you can skill it. And yeah, but since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.